Hello and welcome to tonight's homework help for Wednesday night, October 24th, 2012. We're going to jump right in with distributive equations. Use the distributive property to solve the following equations. Show all of your work. Check your answers, okay? So you get one point credit for showing all of your work and one point credit for checking your answer. Okay, we're going to jump right in and do, um, let's do this problem here uh, on the bottom right. Uh, Okay, we got 2 times the quantity of 3x plus 4 equals 44. Okay, so we're going to, that's 2 being multiplied by this quantity here of all of these items that are being added. So since it's 2 times the quantity, we're going to multiply 2 times each of these items inside the quantity, come up with 2 new terms that are added together that still equal 44. So I'm going to do 2 times 3x. Uh, that should be 2 times 3x. Bring down the plus sign. And then do 2 times 4. Well, we just write 2 times 4. That's equal to 44 still. Okay. Then uh, here we have 2 times 3 times x is essentially what's going on there. So I'll just multiply the 2 times 3 and then leave that multiplied by the x. So 2 times 3 is 6 times x is x. Plus 2 times 4 is 8. And that's still equal to 44. Now at this point we've, we're done with the distributive property and using it. We've distributed the 2 to both of these. We've multiplied them through and come up with our new left-hand side of our equation. And the right-hand side we just copied down. Now this should look familiar, what we were doing all last week, uh, two-step equations. So now we want to um, isolate the variable, the x, we want to get it all alone. So we want to strip it of the 6 that's being multiplied by it and this 8 that's being added by it. And it just so happens that we use PEMDAS, but we use the reverse PEMDAS when we're uh, solving an equation. So we're going to want to start with addition and subtraction first. Uh, since we're adding 8 here, we're going to want to turn that to a 0 by subtracting 8. So if we subtract 8 from 8, that'll become a 0. And then we know that 6x plus 0 equals 6x. Okay, but I forgot to do something on this side. I need to be fair and balanced. So if I subtracted 8 here, I need to subtract the exact same number from here, which is 8. 44 minus 8 is 36. Okay, then I'm not done yet because my variable is here and it's still being attached to the 6 by multiplication. So we're using the inverse of multiplication. We draw a fraction bar to show division. We're going to divide by 6 specifically because 6 divided by 6, that means that 6 goes into 6 one time. So we cross it out with a 1, and I know that 1 times my x will give me just a plain old x down here at the bottom. But I can't forget to take care of this other side here. I divided one side by 6, so I must also divide that other side by that same 6. 36 divided by 6 happens to be 6. There's my answer. But I'm not done yet. This is one point right here. The other point is checking your work. So I'm going to do it here on the side. Um, and so what I do is I copy the side of the equation that has the variable. Sometimes the side of the equation that has the variable might not be the right side. It may actually be on the left. So whichever side has the variable, I copy that down. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to, I'll do this actually down below. So I get uh, uh, 2 times 3x plus 4. And I don't even write the equals, okay? Because I'm going to evaluate this half of the equation. The, I'm just going to evaluate this expression and then figure out if my answer matches the original answer that they gave up here. So uh, in place of the x that I got for my answer, I'm going to substitute this x here with what x equals, which is 6. So I'm going to jump a, a pop a 6 into there in place of the x. So then I end up rewriting it as 2 times 3 times 6 plus 4. Well, 3 times 6 is 18, and then we have plus 4, and the 2 multiplied on the outside. 
Well, 18 plus 4 is 22. And I have the 2 still being multiplied on the outside. Okay? Uh, 2 times 22 equals 44. So then I look at this answer, and I compare it to the original other side of the equation that I didn't copy, and they both match. So that means that the answer that I got here is correct. Okay? We're going to go ahead and move on to the other side. Okay, here we are on the other side, distributive property multiplication part B. Okay, instructions, multiply the whole numbers below by using the distributive property, multiply the tens and ones place values separately, and add the products. So in all of these problems, we're going to take this first number and we're going to split it up into a sum of the tens place and the ones place. So I'm just going to do the very bottom line, since in theory that would probably be the hardest one. Um, okay, so... Let's see here, I have 77, 77 times 2 equals something times something plus something times something, which equals something plus something equals something. Okay, a lot of somethings. Well, I know from here that I'm multiplying everything by 2, so I know that that comes after the multiplication symbol, so I'm going to fill that in right away. That's times 2 and that's times 2. Okay, and then um, 77 can be split up into 70 for the tens place, let me try that, writing that again there, uh, it's going to be split up into 70 plus 7, okay, so on this side we had the tens place, and here we have the ones place, so I'm going to put a 70 in the first space, and a 7 in the second space, okay, now 70 times 2, well I know 7 times 2 is 14, and if I put that 0 back on for 70, then it should be 14 with a 0 at the end, or 140, okay? Um, then uh, I have 7 times 2 here, and we already know that that's 14, and then all I have to do is add these two numbers, 14, 140 plus 14 equals 154. 154. Okay, so you're going to do all these problems in the same fashion. Be sure and fill them out. Uh, I would start by taking, like here, I take that times 6, and I just put a 6 there and a 6 there. That'll start you off. And then remember to split that 57 into 50 plus 7. You put your 50 there, your 7 there. Then you'll multiply this out, and that'll go in this first blank space. You'll multiply these two out, and that'll go in the second blank space after the plus sign, just like there's a plus sign there. Then you'll add these two together and you'll get a new answer. Please do that for all of these problems. If you have any other questions, please, please feel free to contact either Mr. Schlepper or myself. Good night, good luck, and go Bears! Rawr!